Mother Jan Burns was right. The whole basis of the power of the Synod has been formed and fashioned around prayer. Prayer that has gone out and touched the lives of many people who in turn wish to empower this group, their delegates, their representatives, to open themselves to the Spirit and the power of the Spirit as we assist Mother Church. And when I say that truly it has been prayer, yesterday I received a phone call from Cardinal James Harvey, who called specifically to tell me that he's praying for this synod. This morning I received a phone call from Bishop David Ricken of Green Bay, who called to tell me that he was praying specifically for the work of the synod. I'm going to reveal to you the wealth of the church. Look around you. The wealth of the church is found in the faith that is practiced by its faithful. You are the wealth of the church. It's not constructed in buildings, in deposits. It's not constructed in emerald jewels. It's constructed in the faith of the people that profess their love for Jesus Christ in his church. I want to offer you an image that's always associated in my mind, and you'll soon find out why, with Pentecost. I was a kid who was born and raised in that suburb to the to the south of us called Chicago. <laughs> on the south side of Chicago. In a parish called St. Michael's. Now, there were not wealthy people in St. Michael's. There were hard-working industrial people worked in the steel mills, gave their pennies to the church, but they built an edifice which was a statement reflective of their belief. They built this grand cathedral. It sat 2,000 people. And when you walked into the church, you were humbled by the size and the grandeur of this edifice. I've often said that you did not have to be a good preacher, you could even be a poor preacher in St. Michael's. Because everything that adorned the inside of the church was preaching about Christ, the gospel, and what our destiny was. What made this edifice unique was the fact on both sides, to the east and to the west, were two stained glass windows that rose 64 feet high and 22 feet wide. Imagine that, 64 feet high and 22 feet wide. And one was depicted in stained glass, the Last Judgment. There, of course, was Christ seated on his throne and those being judged according to the actions that they lived in this world in response to him. And there were those being dragged down into hell, into the depths of hell, where the guardian was St. Michael, and those being lifted up to heaven. Certainly a stark aspect of the responsibility of our faith. But on the right side, that 64-foot high stained glass, was Pentecost. It was Pentecost. There in the middle of the stained glass was the Blessed Mother, surrounded by the apostles, with the Holy Spirit descending upon them in tongues of flame. There in the center was Mother, the focal point, and I believe the focal point for us today. What is Mother? There, in every one of our lives and hearts, there is a special place for Mother. Mother's the first one that provides for us, that cares for us, that nurtures us. Mother is the one who struggles and labors to give us life. Mother. Mother's the one who feeds us. 
Mother is the one who protects us. Mother is the one who suddenly gives us a sense of forgiveness. So when we wrong and we, we go off on our own, it's Mother who forgives us and embraces us and brings us back. And in that act of forgiveness teaches us how to forgive others. Mother. Mother courageously helps form us. So that suddenly, when time comes to walk on our own, we are filled with the values and the sense that we need to proclaim in the world. Mother courageously defends us. And it's that sense of belonging to mother that we have as we grow and we mature. I use that image of mother because I am telling you mother is in need today from us. And that mother is our mother, the church. Our mother, the church, needs we, her children, formed and fashioned. Our mother, the church, who fed us through word and sacrament. Our mother, the church, who offered us a sense of forgiveness when we wronged and instructed us to help to forgive others. Our mother, the church, who formed and fashioned us with a responsibility that we have not only to ourselves, but our brothers and sisters in faith. Our mother, the church, who courageously stands for those aspects which reflect the dignity of every human being and the responsibility to embrace and give an invitation to those who are neglected or marginalized. But I say our mother of the church needs her children because we immediately know as mother grows older there is a dependency, and a dependency becomes where her children begin to take care of her. Oh, our mother is still young and vibrant, our mother is, but our mother needs our support. Our mother needs us. Form, fashion, creativity, with a sense of courage to stand in testimony with a sense, immediately, to understand the importance of being church in this world, at this time. When we listen to the first reading, a famous reading of Babel, sense of confusion. What causes that sense of confusion? The sense of confusion causes when the vision is of one's own making when the vision is to become the power replacing God. If we have a challenge in this world, it's a challenge to make sure that God is always the sense and the focus of our responsibilities, of our accountability. <laughs> it's understanding that connected to that sense of God helps everyone within our community, to fashion a goodness that can only be beneficial to all. <coughs> when we're on the right track, there is a voice that touches our hearts. There is a voice that opens us up to understanding God's presence in our world. And we are called, as believers, we are called as mature children of Mother Church to profess that belief publicly and to share it with our brothers and sisters. We might ask, what can we do? We're just a small entity in a vast world. I'm sure that same question was asked by the first apostles and disciples. What can we do? We're fishermen, tax collectors, zealots. What do we know about mass media? What do we know about marketing? What do we know 
about publicity. We do know the Spirit. And we know when we open ourselves up to the Spirit, transformation occurs. And a transformation that reflects the truth of God's presence to a world that needs that voice. You have been singled out. You have been singled out by those that respect, admire your leadership, see a type of quality in you, in your wisdom, that needs to be shared. And we, as the Archdiocese, gather collectively together to listen to that wisdom, to form and fashion our priorities, to make sure that our hearts are open to the movement of the Spirit in the lives of our parishes, to make sure that the voice of a loving God is heard by all. I thank you very much for coming to help Mother, for being her children formed and fashioned in the faith, and for caring enough about her to offer your time and your profession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.